Welcome to Undercover and welcome into Cram. Thanks, thanks a lot. As Cram Solo, not Cram Spider Man. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. I've, uh, I'm now by myself. The for spotlight. At least for this record, anyway. Yeah. yeah, the spotlight's well and truly over the I place. I get to right procrastinate now. all by myself. Isn't that like, right? What song am I going to put out now? <laughs> do I like this song? Is it crap? Is it brilliant? You know? yeah. What do you think? You know, so I spent a, like, making this album was just like looking in all these different mirrors. I felt like I was in that scene in, um, in Enter the Dragon. Yeah. Every time I turn around the corner, I thought, you know, there's all these like different versions of myself. So. Wow. But it was good. I, I really enjoyed making it. So. Well, you've gone in and uh, created quite a lot of different sounds as well with this record too, mm. haven't you? Mm. It's not like the, uh, you know, the cram sound and let's multiply it by, you know, how many tracks yeah, on the album. Yeah, by good songs and crap ones. Yeah, that, <laughs> no, no, the, I mean, the, the album is called Mixtape and that's the idea I had is I wanted to create a kind of like you were making a, a tape of all these different records or CDs that you liked that you wanted to give to someone to, you know, go to a party or something. And um, But I, it, I wanted to play all the instruments myself and, and sing it all and, you know, do it all yourself. So it's all coming from one person's mind, you know. Mm-hmm. And... Um, yeah, I ended up re- recording two records worth of stuff, so this is this is the first one. All oh, right. So, mm. what is the plan to release the other stuff? I'd or is like that just. To, oh no, it's a it's a full album, all, all finished. So yeah. we mastered the whole thing together, and um, I provided that the record company's happy to put it out, <laughs> which I think they are. Is um, it'll be kind of like mixtape side B, you know. All right. So yeah. Yeah, part two. A bit like you know when uh, Back to the Future Part Two and Three yeah, was yeah. made. One, all. Day, one, one big movie. Once for the daytime, once for the nighttime. No, there's just so much. I recorded so much material. Um, that I thought was, you know, good quality. So I wanted to try and at least... Um, there was talk originally of putting it all out on, at, at once, in like a big, you know, massive thing, but I just think it would have been just too much. So we just thought we'd split it in, into two. Yeah. Well, let's talk about some of the things that were involved with uh, the making of this, and number one being the video. Yeah, and yeah. A very, very interesting video. Yeah, at, cheers. At that. Oh, yeah. It was awesome. That was a classic. Um, look, I always wanted to do one of those sort of um, a funny kind of sport clip where... Um, you know, you get up and do your thing, but you're kind of dressed totally inappropriately, you know. And um, and I, I'm actually a pretty good tennis player, so I always thought tennis was the one because I like how tennis is it's a lot of theatre about it and it's kind of, you know, there's a lot of movement and, and things going on and you're in a very um, uh, stadium-like, you know, place. And I, I was like, well, maybe I could get a, um, a professional player to play against me, so I like it. So we tried to get in contact with Alicia Mollick and, and she really liked the song and said she'd do it. So it was awesome. Yeah. And then, you know, so she turns up and, and I got my, my good friend Nick Sester to be in it as well because I wanted him to be the umpire. I wanted to have someone, some sort of rock and roll dude as the yeah. umpire. Yeah. And I said, all you got to do, man, is just sit there and just, <laughs> look, just shake your head occasionally. Yeah. He's like, I just can, like yeah, on cool. stage. I can yeah. do that. Yeah, yeah, I can do that. And that was really cool. And also because Nick has, he'd... Um, He's heard a lot of the stuff I've been recording over the last couple of years and I play it to him and stuff and I would hear Jet stuff he was doing, you know. So I, I kind of thought he would be a good guy to be in the clip as well. And then we just went for Hell for Leather and um, I think I got about one point offer and oh. that was the one we filmed that's immortalised in yeah. on, on screen. So. I was going to ask you how that, that match ended up. So it was, well, it was pretty, pretty nasty in the end really. Oh, we weren't it? really playing. You know, <laughs> I won one point and uh, then she went home. No, but she was awesome and, and she acted really cool and... And I, so when I first saw it, I just thought, this is fucking this is <laughs> mental. So I'm, I'm really happy that everyone likes it. Yeah, and particularly Nick in there. That's a, you know, because he's not in there as Nick Sester, is there? He's just in there, very subtle. Well, I didn't, I didn't want to, make, I thought it would be a bit cheesy to say, you know, here's Nick Sester from <laughs> Jet and Alicia Mollick from Tennis. And who's that other dude? Oh, yeah. it's Graham, you know. I just, I just wanted it to be kind of like these strange characters who turn up in this place and do this thing. And it seemed, even though the song lyrically has nothing to do with tennis, of course. Um, it seems to suit the vibe of it really well. So, mm. it's but is, is Nick wearing a silk suit? I don't know. It may have been. It yeah. was very late at night, so yeah. we we didn't start filming until about two in the morning. So, yeah. um, but he might have. Yeah, maybe check, he is. Check out the video That's a really good yeah. first time I've heard of that. Yeah, it's excellent. Okay. Check it out. Can Nick Sester in a suit. Yeah, I'm going to say that next time. Yeah. Yeah. Well, <laughs> we actually got him to wear a silk suit. Yeah, you know. yeah. yeah. That's right. <laughs> but um, no, it's 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 turned out really funny, so it's good. Yeah, and you know, it starts off with a, a, a very nice car, which yes, is becoming a bit of a theme in the videos these days. Yeah, isn't it? that's that's my uh, that's my 1975 Maserati that I drive around the streets of Melbourne. Yeah, and so that's uh, your car. Yeah, that's my car. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, I bought that after I. I got a big royalty check once, and I'm like, should I, should I put it into the bank? No, I think I'll buy an Italian sports car yes, instead, and yes. so I did. And and ever since then, I've tried to put it in little videos and stuff, and and it was just so funny because that's that's the perfect 
the opening shot I like the way the video guys did that where the, the car rolls in and then you do just you just get out yeah. and it's just like what the fuck's going on here yeah so look if you've got a, if you've got an Italian sports car you've got to put it in your clip don't well, you well you know it's probably a good way to uh, you know <laughs> sort of claim it on tax although it's well it's, it's, it's this is genius yeah I love this guy no the, but the greatest Italian sports car story I have if you must bring it up is one day I um, was driving down the road and I saw none other than Shane Warne mm. driving past me in his silver Ferrari with a with the top down, wearing his one day um, one day cricket uniform, his yellow <laughs> uniform, and smoking a fag, driving down towards Brighton. <laughs> it was the gold. Just like Warney. That's awesome. <laughs>